Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be unboxing the Pixio PX248 Pro. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links. Let's get this thing unboxed. At first glance, this may look like nothing special. Your average 1080p, 24-inch, entry-level gaming monitor. Well, that is how it looks at first glance, but there's a lot of special things going that could make this one of the best monitors on a budget the single best. All right, so let's unbox this. At least from the specs, there's basically no red flags at all. And so far, before actually testing this, the only thing that could really go wrong here would be like quality control issues like backlight bleed, but let's check it out. All right, the stand is metal, which is very surprising for this price point of, I believe, $169.99, so 170 bucks which is very actually competitive. For everything this offers, it's not even actually competitive, it's like groundbreaking. All right, so the stand here, it is nice. It is in a few different pieces. This all does feel very high quality. It's got a nice cable channel through here. It's got swivel. This actually feels very high quality. Thick plastic. You do have to screw some stuff together though, as you can see. All right, so here are the screws. For this price, I do not mind putting together the stand in a little bit more difficult way. They already have some Loctite on there, which is nice. Then let's put that other piece in before we put the middle piece in. There we go. Then they screw together in the middle, which is kind of a cool design element. And there we go, the stand is done. I'm actually very impressed with how sturdy and strong this is. Uh, and you have a ton of adjustability here, basically every adjustment you'll want. Okay, in the box, you get a display port cable and then the power brick, which doesn't look like a massively long power connection, but not too big of a deal. All right, let's get to the panel itself. And there it is, 24 inches, pretty much what you'd expect. We're gonna slide, this is a lock-in stand, as you can see there. So this is a lock-in stand, which is nice and premium. So we're gonna slide that in there. I can't really see, but we're gonna lock in the top, press it down, and it's, it should be all locked in. Have a little like manual stuff like that which is kind of cool, I guess. All right, but let's take this PE foam off. There's the panel. All right, let's get this on the desk. It is about what you'd expect as for weight. I mean, it's very attractive looking. Pretty basic front panel. You have some nice tapered edges, which are actually kind of cool. So they're kind of like a rounded edge, but we can't see how big the bezels are yet. So we'll see that in a bit, but all right, let's go over the ports really quick. We got a display port 1.2, two HDMI 2.0s, and then your three and a half millimeter audio out. And, and that's it, but really that's all you need for a monitor like this. Then for the stand, you got swivel. Ooh, that feels good. It's like a firm swivel, easy to get it really accurately in place. A nice, really smooth operation here. And then a nice height. And I think we got full rotation. Ooh, and it's nice and locking. Wow. This honestly feels like really good. That feels as good as Alienware brands. Like that's actually very impressive, maybe even better it locks into the place, it like lock in the center. That's really, really nice. I'm heavily impressed, heavily, I'm highly impressed. I'm highly impressed. You also got some nice little like, like that's nice. It might matches the top up here. It looks nice. Overall, I'm, I'm very impressed here. But that's enough talking. Let's get on the desk. We're gonna turn it on, do an initial impressions of it, gaming test and a ghosting test. And we're also gonna test some backlight bleed. All right guys, now with it on the desk, let's turn on, see how it is. All right. Turning it on with that joystick on the right side. There we go, it's, it's up so far, it looks good. Nice thinner bezels. It is slightly thicker because, well, the plastic kind of juts out a little bit, uh, but overall, very thin bezels. I mean, there's my finger. But let's go into the display settings because while it is doing 1080p, I can tell that it is not doing full refresh rate, so bump it up there, 165 hertz. But if you haven't actually seen this monitor yet, if you haven't seen the specs, you might be thinking, well, what's so special about it? Well, number one, $169.99. This is the big thing here. While you're getting 165 Hertz, which is great, you're actually getting 98.5% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. This is a nano IPS panel. Now, we're gonna go to NVIDIA control panel, but if you are then comparing that to my most recommended 24 inch gaming monitor, which uh, LG 24 GN650, that only covers the sRGB color gamut. So it doesn't have wide color gamut support. Here has incredibly wide color gamut support, which means HDR, means a lot of different things. So we're gonna see if this can output 10 bits of color. I do expect it to, and it can. I mean, it's a very, very pretty panel. It does have that matte finish on it, um, obviously, which does look like it's going to degrade the picture quality a little bit, but that's pretty typical. Let's go into the menu system. All right, so here is the menu system. Uh, brightness, why it's not going over. Do you have to click in? Yes, okay. <laughs> so click in, we're gonna turn it all the way up. Yeah, I mean, it's not crazy bright, right? That's probably the only part where you're going to see 
you know, a little bit um, less, but I mean, it's good. For $169.99 and, and getting that wide color gamut, we'll keep going through. You got a lot of different presets. Um, the menu system's a little bit confusing because you have to click, you have to tap in. We're gonna go to standard, user. They don't look like they're changing much, which is actually a good thing because it might mean that it's tuned a little bit better than your average panel. But then you have the different color and gamma settings, saturation, inputs, all right, so in the menu system, going down to gaming setup, this is like what you're mainly going to be in. Uh, FreeSync, we're going to turn that on. So we have FreeSync on, the overdrive settings right here for all your ghosting, which we are going to test. You have like your FPS counter and crosshairs, which is very cool. HDR, which you can turn on and off, which is nice. DCR, don't use that. Uh, this is essentially going to be your like low um, motion blur mode. Uh, so we might test that out. All right, I mean, pretty basic stuff. There's nothing crazy with this monitor, but well, it doesn't need to be. Okay, I think with that, let's hop in game, see how this thing does. All right guys, hopping right in game, the first thing you notice is it's very pretty. Okay, that's the first thing you notice. As far as input lag feel, only at 165 hertz, I mean, it feels really good as we would expect. I mean, it's very pretty. I especially wanna go out here to show you the colors look beautiful. Now, this is only an SDR, so we're not taking advantage of that full color gamut, so we are gonna hop in a different game, uh, or maybe the same game, and test out that color gamut in HDR. But oh my God, what a leap for 169 bucks, you're getting that wider color gamut. And I also will say, because this does have the matte finish, uh, it's not a really bad matte finish at all. Like in games, the wider areas of the screen don't have that, um, like you can definitely kind of notice it, but you have to like look for it in game. It's not bothering me. Uh, so that means it's, well, pretty, pretty low. Unless you're a display enthusiast, you're probably not going to care, which if you're wanting to buy this monitor, you're probably not. But from a display enthusiast, this is an unbelievably good deal. And there's like no enemies for some reason. A really fun monitor to game on for sure. I mean, God, for the price, uh, I haven't done the full review, but I mean, as of right now, I see this being a, I see this definitely being a huge potential candidate uh, for the most recommended like entry level gaming monitor, which this, the overall experience is far better than a lot of entry level gaming monitors. So I don't, I don't like using that name because this is, it's, it's actually really good. Especially if you're sitting at the distance that I am currently sitting, you can see this distance uh, is a little bit farther away and it, and it really makes your pixel density like not a problem. If you're like, oh, I, I'm going 1080p. If you're going at this distance, it really doesn't matter. I mean, oh, just such an enjoyable gaming monitor. It's pretty, it's fast. As far as ghosting, like it's nothing like a VA panel. Uh, it does look like it might have a little bit of ghosting, but I think we're in the low response time setting. So I'm sure that's probably going to fix it. Uh, but even without it, I mean, this is a really good sell. I mean, LG's 24 GN 650, which only covers the sRGB color space. And yes, it does have more brightness. Well, it's just, it's not this monitor. This is something special for the price. And that monitor also retails for $250, which you can find it on sale for $220 pretty regularly. But I mean, this is really impressive here. All right, really quick, we're gonna throw into HDR, see how this thing does. All right, guys, hopping in game in HDR now. Um, I wanna say it gets pretty dim. So the HDR definitely is dim. I mean, you do have the wider color gamut here, which is nice. Turning up the in-game brightness definitely helps. Battlefield 2042 is actually like not as well calibrated for HDR as well, I think Battlefield 5 was pretty amazing at it, to be honest with you. But it just feels so special to have while you're not getting, you know, a crazy HDR experience. There's no local dimming here. There's no any of that. But you don't expect that for $169.99. I mean, you really don't. And what you get here is those wider colors. You get a really beautiful image. You get, well, even if it's a matte finish, it's not a super thick one, which I really appreciate. So you're getting a lot for your money here. And I just think it's so, I just think it's so awesome that Pixio is doing this. Really entering a market space that no one asked for. No one asked for a fantastic 24 inch 1080p panel because all these tech reviewers, all these other people are always doing the most high end stuff that really no one can afford. Anyone can get this. And honestly, at least at this point in time, well, you should, it just seems really good. Also that person doesn't know how to fly. All right, let's test the ghosting, see how it does. All right guys, now with the ghosting test, the UFO test here on the screen, I can see actually we're getting a little bit of something here, but it's not ghosting. It's not ghosting, it's overshoot. So we're getting some overshoot here. Um, so it's a little bit overdriven, which is kind of a bummer because I think this is in the lowest setting. Okay, not quite the lowest setting. We're gonna go up to the highest, just see what it looks like. Very subtle difference, but it is, it is overdriven, okay? Uh, some overshoot, which is which is honestly kind of interesting um, that every single setting has overshoot, um, except let's try off. There we go. 
And there we go, no overshoot, uh, but we do get a small amount of ghosting here. So you're either gonna get a small amount of ghosting, uh, and I do mean a small amount of ghosting. This is very impressive, um, as good as the 24GN650 here. So the ghosting, set it in off. That's what you're gonna want it in. That's the best setting here. Uh, if you do prefer overshoot, which is more of that white light trail, um, I wouldn't recommend it, but set it in off and you're gonna be good. Let's, I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing and that's how good it is. It looks great. I'm very excited for this monitor. So far, very bullish. And honestly, I'm really impressed with what Pixio is doing. I think right now you can, it's in the pre-order phase. So Pixio did send this to me, but we're not sponsored. Uh, you guys know I, I definitely give my opinions whether I like something or not, and I'm just very excited. I think this is a space that not a lot of creators cover, and I like people being able to save money. This may be the best entry-level 24-inch 1080p gaming monitor that you can buy. If you wanna check it out before the full review, there's Amazon links below again, but again, in a few days or maybe some weeks, it's been tough doing Type-C lately because the main channel or the second channel uh, has been taking a ton of my time, but yeah, really excited about this one. This is Type-C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.